Hello, this is Dori Horesca, Forever Quilting. Today I'm going to let you tag along as I decide which quilting designs I'm going to use on this top. Sometimes I draw the designs for each block before I begin. Other times I choose some basic designs and then decide how to incorporate those designs into each block. That's what I've done with this quilt. I've already stitched out several blocks, so I have a good idea of how I'm going to stitch out the next two. Now these techniques and some of these designs can be found in my book Making Connections, but I'm also going to be describing how to use many designs in one block, which can seem extremely complicated if you've not been quilting for very long. At the end of this video, if you would like to learn more about these techniques, especially the basics, then head over to my website at forever-quilting.com and order the book. Now let's get started. So here's our first block. Now, especially in traditional blocks like this one, I look at the different shape units in the block, such as the squares, the, tri uh, the triangles, the flying geese blocks, and then I look at the different fabrics. Like the background here usually gets a little bit more quilting to push it down, and then the darker fabrics would be considered feature fabrics, which we would want to maybe have less quilting in them. Now because I chose to put a border of feathers going around the edge of this block, that meant that this block design could not connect to the next one. Not ideal, but sometimes that's just how it is. So with these blocks, I'll plan to stitch each of them separately, starting by stitch framing them and stitching in the ditch, which will frame them. Now this step is not necessary, especially if you're not comfortable with rulers yet. I just like how it prevents the block from drawing up in the center if it gets over quilted. Now the designs I've chosen for the other blocks have been a bracket, which is designed like that. Um, I've done some circles, ribbons, which would be, whoops. Ignore that. <laughs> Ribbons, like that. Or feathers, hearts, and then also straight lines. Okay, now I'm using some plastic here, uh, surrounded by some blue painter's tape, and that way I won't get onto my actual fabric when I'm marking. Now the brackets are a great design for traveling around the block, so I chose to put them in the background units. Actually, I did double brackets, but for now we'll just draw the single bracket. So if I put brackets in these background blocks, and maybe put them in these triangles, that way I can travel from one to the other, going all the way around. Okay, Maybe I'll do the same thing in these backgrounds, background units. Maybe just do it on this side. Okay, um, let's see, so I'm going to start here for my stitching in the ditch, that way I can start right in on this bracket when I come inside. So what I'll do is I'll start here, bring my thread up, stitch all the way around the outer edge, all the way around, and then come back to this point. Then I'm not going to break my thread, I'm going to continue stitching inside. I'm going to do the brackets. Then we'll do this bracket and connect all the way around the background. Let's see. What if I try to incorporate some of the ribbons in this corner block? So I might take this one out because that's a lot of brackets going on there. So I want to mix it up with some different designs. So maybe I'll put a ribbon in here. But if I do that, I'm only going from this point to this point. I can't come back. If you follow along the book, you've always got to have a way to travel back through it. So I'll have to fix that in a minute. Let's see. And I can do more brackets here. Which I think I need to fill in this space here. So I think I'll put another bracket going up. And probably stitch those twice. So I'll probably end up putting two in there. Doesn't look pretty when I'm drawing it, but it'll look good when I quilt it. OK, 
Okay, so we'll do the same thing here. Now, how am I going to get to these background units if I don't put a bracket right here to join them at these intersections? And probably what I'll have to do is stitch in the ditch around here, and that way I get back to my ribbon. That'll work. Now in the center, I think I'll put some feathers. I hate to put just one big feather. Maybe I'll put some small ones. So I'll do my stem that kind of goes through the middle. Not real perfect because I'm freehanding this, so I don't want to worry about it being totally straight. And I'll then come back and do the feathers on each side. As I'm going around because I'm trying to keep everything connected. Okay, then on the next pass, I can do the ones on the inside. There. Now I'm getting back to where I started, so I'll keep doing my brackets as I go around. Now this triangle here is kind of large to leave empty. Um, these smaller ones would be great to leave empty because they're small enough, but this big one, I need to do something in there. I think this is what's tripped me up every time I come to this block. So I really don't want to put a whole lot of stuff in there um, to really smash it down. I kind of want it to stand up. Um, I could come in and do just a curve, curve, and leave it at that. Um, I could come in from this intersection or this one and make a design like a feather or a curl. I could just come with a curl. Um, and I do have a few curls in this quilt. So that might be a good option. It fills in just a little bit. Um, but not too much. That way it doesn't smash down that block a whole lot. Okay, so maybe I'll just leave it at that. I think that's a good plan. All right, well when I come back I'll stitch it out.
This is our next block we're going to look at. Same thing with the other one. We've got our background units, and then we've got our center units that are four different colors. Um, after you've done a few of these, it's kind of easy to do the next one because you kind of start with those same basic designs of what you're working with, like the brackets. So we can easily put our brackets in here. And we can put them in here. Maybe we'll divide this in half so we can go up to the corner. Of course, we'll double those up to add a little bit more quilting. Um, and these center ones, Gosh, there's all kinds of things you could do. These kind of trip me up every once in a while, just trying to figure out what to do. But um, you can divide them into the triangle units that they are. Um, but I kind of like to do them um, like all the same fabric, do the same design in there. So we could come in here and just do some straight lines, mimicking. Maybe we'll come in and do it from there. Or we can do... We can come in from the edge and do just echoes here, kind of spacing them out. We could do a couple more to fill in that space. Um, or we could do, again, we have to remember how many times are we going to pass this block to get to the other side. So if we just did two and then we came in the ditch here and did some curls going up the center, that's three passes, so we're not getting back to where we started. So we have to kind of consider that. So that really wouldn't work either. Um, although I do like this one, because this one is four passes. So like when we are at this intersection, we could come in here and do these four passes here. We'll be back here where we started. We can come back down in the ditch and then keep going on our bracket that's an option okay um, and maybe we'll do a mixture of options we don't have to do all four of these darker fabrics the same the same way we can do them different um, another thing we can do is when we're at this intersection we can do a stem for a feather hmm, I don't like that maybe we'll do from one corner to the other Hmm. Yep, let's do that. Let's do that one. And then we'll go back up the stem this way. Of course, those will be a little bit smaller. Now, I know a lot of times people start in the center and they go out. Um, but I really don't like the buildup of thread right there. And especially since I'm using white thread throughout this whole quilt. Um, I've got to be a little bit aware of that. So every time I come to this intersection, I could come in and do a feather. That would put feathers in each one of those. Um, or I could alternate feathers in these two and the straight lines in these two blocks here. Those are great options. Um, again kind of filling in too many brackets here so what if we put another square here and then put in um, maybe the ribbon and then brackets on these two sides kind of like that Okay, so again, I might stitch here in the ditch. Start here stitching in the ditch. As I go up, I think what I'm going to want to do, though, is to stitch these two lines, do my ribbon, and then keep stitching in the ditch. Because I really want those two straight lines there before I do my brackets. So I think that's what I'll work on. Okay, this still has a little bit of... Uh, decisions to make on this block so when we come back i'll show you how to stitch it out and you'll know what i decided